Chrissy Boy takes center stage once again in episode 8 as Adriana breaks up with him and he robs safes with his two goons, Sean and Matt. I say that, but Sean is mostly busy relieving himself due to adrenaline. Anyway, the Italian Beavis and Butthead aren't too happy with their progress in the organization so far, and they begin making moves to improve their status, starting with a visit and introduction to Richie, and continuing with a weird approach to Tony at the Bada Bing's bathroom. The big boss berates the two knuckleheads for striking up a dangerous conversation there, as the place could be bugged by the feds, frustrating the duo even further. But the final nail in the coffin is Furio's rather ill-mannered collection of Tony's 10% cut. During this exchange, Furio even takes 1k for himself, and the two associates simply have enough. Their concerns might be legitimate, but the steps they take to alleviate those concerns is so moronic that words can't do them justice. Here is their genius idea to create their own path. Executing Chris on behalf of Richie, as Richie doesn't like Chris for a variety of reasons, one of which is the fact that Chris mistreats Richie's niece, Adriana. They go after Chris outside a diner, with Sean firing off three shots before Chris can hit back. Chris is lucky because Sean forgets to unbuckle his seatbelt, and that's how Chris is able to deliver a lethal blow to Sean, and then he forces Matt to run away like a little girl. Chris is badly injured, but at least he is still alive. Matt decides going to Richie and explaining the situation to him would help him, but Richie is completely bamboozled, he was unaware of all of this, so he chases Matt away with a baseball bat. By this point, Chris had apologized to and proposed to Adriana, and she said yes, so she is devastated to hear the news. Tony is similarly affected, wondering how this could happen to Chris just when he truly committed himself to the Mafia, and he even took steps to start a family of his own with Adriana. And they might have their differences, but Tony does love Chris, which is why he's worried sick that Chris might not make it out alive. In between all of this, Meadow's college saga returns. She wants to study on the other side of the country at UCLA, while her parents want to keep her close, thinking that Georgetown should do the trick. However, it doesn't look like she'll get into Georgetown, causing Carmela to turn on her mama bear mode and chase down her neighbor Jean Cusimano's sister Joan, an alumna of Georgetown, for a letter of recommendation. Carmela's passive-aggressive insistence scares the twins, and Joan does end up writing that letter despite initially refusing to do so. And also during this storyline, Meadow receives a letter from UCLA advising her to resubmit her application with new documents, and this letter is first found by her mother. Carmela tosses the letter in the trash before deciding to retrieve it, and she does her best to clean it, but Meadow does realize something is off when she sees the dirty letter, and despite this, she decides to let it go and stay quiet for now. Lastly, we have the Jacket Gate. This is a storyline that begins with Tony requesting Richie to help Beansy, who Richie crippled at the start of the season. The capo is asked to send his nephew Vito to make Beansy's house wheelchair accessible, but Vito and his crew only finish half the job as they're also renovating Livia's house, where Richie and Janice will live with Livia once she's out of the hospital. Richie promises Tony that he will get Beansy's house done in no time, and he also gives Tony a leather jacket he got off of Rocco Di Meo, a tough guy from the 70s who was feared by everybody in the family, and Richie got the better of him and got his jacket. Let's just say Tony doesn't share the same admiration for this piece of clothing, probably not due to the jacket itself, but because it's a gift from Richie, and Richie is surprised multiple times throughout the episode because Tony doesn't ever wear it and Richie begins to question his loyalty to Tony when he brings some food to Carmela as another sign of goodwill, and he sees that their Polish cleaning woman's husband is wearing the jacket. Richie gets so angry, he looks like he'll burst a blood vessel, and this certainly will not help the rocky relationship of Tony and Richie. Richie did try to make amends, but they weren't reciprocated. That does it for episode 8, leave your comments about this episode down below, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more TV show breakdowns. Take care and see you in the next video.